We're just gonna be going through a little bit of a manual muscle test for these muscles next. So basically, in a lot of manual muscle test videos, it's gonna be tricky because there's so many erectors here, but that principle is putting your hand above and below our segments. So for our first segment in lumborum, I'm placing a hand on the sacrum, and I'm gonna be placing a hand above that insertion on that rib, around rib seven. I'm gonna ask him to lift his shoulder and back up off the table, laterally flex towards my test side, and then rotate towards my test side. Good, so let's do that one more time. Nice smooth motion for me. Extension, lateral flexion, and ipsy rotation. Good, not quite full motion, but fairly close to it. So he's gonna lift himself up and rotate and hold. And I'm gonna be pushing on that shoulder that he's rotated with, trying to bring it back towards the table for that five seconds. Two and one, and you can relax. And this time again, lift up against my resistance of his hand and rotate. Okay, so there's our active break and concentric for that section. This is gonna look very similar for our thoracis. However, instead of being pressure in and around rib seven on the side, I'm gonna be going up higher because our final insertion is around rib number one. So again, same principle. He's gonna be extending this part of his back, lifting it up, laterally flexing to the left in this case and rotating to the left, good. Let's do that one more time, nice and smooth. Ultimately, he is gonna use his low back at the same time. There's not a lot we can do to prevent that. He's gonna go down slightly, and I'm gonna be pushing higher towards that shoulder at the base of the neck, trying to rotate him back down. Three, two, and one, excellent. And let's go through that full pressure against my resistance and rotate, great. And our final section now is between that rib into the side of the neck. So as I had said earlier, our focus is gonna be about extending, laterally flexing, and ipsy laterally rotating the neck here. So if you're basically able to almost look over top of your left shoulder for me, good, and come back down. So again, as he extends his neck up, he laterally flexes and rotates towards that side, good. He's gonna be halfway out of this cradle I'm turning. I'm gonna go below his ear with my pressure. So a lot of our cervicus muscles, we wanna resist below. If it was a capitis, we'd be lifting above. He's gonna hold this position as I try to bring his head back down. Three, two, and one, excellent. And again, from our starting position, so your head back in the cradle, and just look over your shoulder with my resistance. Beautiful, okay, and that concludes all three manual muscle tests for this muscle. We're gonna take a quick break, we're gonna alter his position, and we'll come back and show you lengthening for this iliocostalis muscle group. All right, welcome back. We're gonna be going through the lengthening now of his iliocostalis. So we're again looking at this muscle that goes all the way along the outside of his ribs and into the transverse processes of the neck. But we're gonna be lengthening it section by section. These first two are gonna look very similar that when you lengthen iliocostalis lumborum and thoracis, it's gonna be a very similar maneuver. As my partner is currently sitting straight right now, this is again a nice seated posture, straight up. However, this is not how a lot of people spend a lot of time at their desks. So the first thing I'm gonna ask him to do is actually just slouch and relax his body. Now what just happened is his whole spine went into some flexion. So that's already starting to lengthen out these erector muscles. So you might not see a lot of extra flexion happening through the spine when I go through this pressure coming up next. So I'm gonna be basically placing my hands on both sides of his shoulders and I'm gonna push down on his spine. And there we go, we see a whole bunch more flexion occurring and it's basically rounded through the whole T-spine and into the lumbar spine. So this is the additional flexion. Let's come back up again so we can just show that from that initial posture, the first slouch to the additional pressure from myself to him. So this is gonna be adding that extra flexion in. What you don't want to do is simply push the person into flexion because what you're actually getting is a lot of hip flexion basically happening at the acetabulofemoral joint. And what I'm looking for is more of that spinal pressure. So there's gonna be a subtle difference here. So watch kind of in my hands. So we're gonna lengthen the lumborum part as I get him to slouch and I 
focus on pushing into that lumbar spine. So there is the flexion of this lumbar spine. Now I spent a lot of time palpating on the left, but just for kind of camera's sake, I'm gonna be lengthening on his right here. So I'm going to laterally flex him to the left. So we've done flexion, lateral flexion, and because these muscles do ipsy lateral rotation, I'm now going to rotate his torso away. So we have flexion, contra lateral flexion, and contra lateral rotation. So that is going to be our length for this iliocostalis lumborum. Okay, going right into the next section in iliocostalis thoracis, this is going to look very similar. I'm going to start to get him to slouch. However, I'm going to be pushing a little bit further forward on the shoulders. So the last time a lot of my pressure was straight down, this time I'm kind of rounding him forward without pushing him forward. So let's just show the subtle detail one more time just to make sure. So on lumborum, I push straight down. Good, come back up. And then versus thoracis, I get him to slouch and I round those shoulders forward. So this is now lengthening more of this rib cage area. Okay, so flexion part one, similar to again, I'm gonna laterally flex him away, getting more length in here. And again, all of these do ipsy lateral rotation. So I'm gonna do contra lateral rotation, lengthening out his spine on the right. Excellent. Okay, for our final section, iliocostalis cervices from around here up into the cervical spine. This is a hand position that I really like. It gives me nice control over the neck. So I'm basically going to place my hand across the back of his neck and just stabilize his shoulder so he doesn't move forward. I'm going to roll his neck forward with palmar pressure. I'm then going to go onto the side and laterally flex his neck away and use my fingertips for the final rotation away. Okay, let's bring him back up and just show that again. Remember, this is a cervicis muscle, so if I push from the top of the head, I'm going to end up getting capital and cervical flexion, but in reality, I'm just wanting that cervical. So I'm just going to roll through the neck and not push on the top of the head. Again, bring my fingers to the side, laterally flex, and then rotate. I'm not digging in with my fingertips. I'm not really grabbing. I'm just using a flat, broad pressure, which means it doesn't feel like I'm grabbing onto the side of their neck. So that's going to be lengthening our third section of this muscle out in iliocostalis cervices. Okay, so that's all three lengths for our muscles today.